Hi there, tonight we're going to look at uh, JSON, JavaScript Ob Object Notation. And I'm trying to add a new microphone, so hopefully this is a little bit better sound quality than what I was using before. So let's get into this and figure out what is JSON. So again, JSON is an abbreviation for JavaScript Object Notation. And you can go to www.json.org to find out more about the standard. There's a really good little tutorial there that shows this to you. It's lightweight text-based data interchange format. So what does that mean? Well, when we're sending data to a server or getting data back from a server, it's going to be in text that we can read as a human. And it's going to be lightweight, which means there isn't going to be a lot of additional uh, mark up there and we'll show you what the differences are and what that really means here in just a moment So it's often used for service or oriented architecture implementations. For example um, It's very common in rest based services Rest can also use XML and it can use other formats, but we often prefer JSON. It's a standard and it is lightweight it works well to take an object and serialize it and put it on the wire between a client and a server so it works really well for that. So here's the basic scenario that we have. We have a web server out there. In our case, we're using IIS and ASP.NET Web API. Um, we can send the request from the web client. We get a response back. So the response back may include JSON. So for example, if we do a get, we could get back this string that looks something like this. Note the curly braces and the, and the different name value pairs that are in here separated by commas. If we were to do a put sending data to the server, we can also do that in JSON, and it's a sim very similar format. In fact, it's identical format, just a different verb. So lightweight. Here's the difference between um, this data in JSON and in XML. So you can see that if we are talking about moving a lot of data across the network that JSON is preferred because it's smaller but yet it's still descriptive. Now XML has some advantages in that the tagging helps us define everything but it is heavier from the perspective that you're sending a lot more data. Now you could probably argue with me and say well I could do XML that was a lot um, less than that but you still aren't going to get it down to what the JSON can do. So in this case, the JSON is 21 characters total, and it's roughly 19 characters per object. And in the XML, it's 94 characters total and 43 characters per object. And that seems pretty small, and for a small example, it probably doesn't make much difference. So let's do a performance comparison, though, if we do 1,000 records. So let's say we were moving 1,000 objects across the wire. We'd send 19,000 characters, or roughly 19K, with JSON, and we'd send 43K with XML. If we did 100,000 records, we'd send 1.9 megabytes of data with JSON and 4.3 megabytes with XML. So that adds up pretty quickly if you're moving a lot of data. So it's over two times the data and more than twice as long to transfer because all those bytes going across the wire will slow down any transfers that you do between client and server. So let's look at this format exactly. So given an object defined as a series of name value pairs like this, so we have uh, in the examples that we've been using in REST, we have this object that's got a last name, a first name, pay rate, start date, end date, and an ID on it. So let's say this were our object. And then in JSON, it would look like this. Note the curly braces, and then the name value pairs. Numbers don't have double quotes around them. Strings do. Uh, dates do. So you can see here a number, and then here a date. And let's just run through exactly what's going on here. So each object is enclosed in curly braces. So if we had multiple objects, we'd have them each in its own set of curly braces. You, the name of the attribute um, would, or the property in this case would be a string in double quotes. And you can see that all the way through here with ID, last name, first name, pay rate, start date, and end date. And then that's followed by a colon, 
followed by the value. And again, numbers numbers are just without double quotes. And if there's another name value pair, you just add a comma and add it. So you'll notice that each one of these is separated by a comma here, 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 and here. But the last one doesn't have a comma. Okay. Now, let's say we had multiple objects. So given a set of objects like this, where we had John Mill and Sue Jones that we were sending, all objects are enclosed in curly braces, or sorry, square brackets. Each object is separated by a comma, and the objects themselves are enclosed within the um, curly braces. So a set in, in JSON, whether it's a set of objects or a set of values, you just simply enclose inside of the square brackets and you separate the values inside. You separate the values with a comma. So um, in this case, this is one object, comma, this is another object, and we could have as many objects as we wanted inside those square brackets. So more generally, it's an object is a set of name value pairs and an array is a collection of values. And a value can be the following. It could be a string, a number, it could be true or false, it could be null, or it could be an object like we showed here, or it could be an array. So if we had a list of numbers on end date, for example, if for some reason end date consisted of a series of end dates, we'd simply enclose those in curly bracket, or I'm sorry, in square brackets with each value separated by a comma. All right, so here's some exercises that you can try out. What would the JSON look like for this object? So you can stop the video now and go ahead and try that out, and then I'll show you the answer of what this would look like. So here's our answer. Because it's an object, we're going to put it inside curly braces, and we separate each attribute with a name value pair, putting the name in double quotes and the value at followed uh, following a colon and then the value and then a comma to separate each one. So hopefully you got that one right. Here's another exercise. What would this what would the JSON look like in this case for this object? And remember if we have a list of values we simply put them inside square brackets. So I'll give you a moment you can stop the video again and write down what you think your answer is. And here's the answer. You'll notice that it's very similar to the last one. The difference, though, is the publish dates because there's multiple dates. We put it inside square brackets and separate each value with a comma. All right, this is our last exercise. So what would JSON look like for an object containing an array of objects? So let's say we had an object and inside of that object were an array of objects. So I'll give you a moment to think about that. You can stop the video and maybe jot that down. Here's what the answer might look like. So we have um, the ID, the title, the pages. Those are all just attributes on the object. Published dates is an attribute as well, but it has multiple values. And then book tours is yet another attribute followed by a colon, and then in square brackets we can list all the objects. So this is how we can have an array of objects inside of a particular attribute inside of an object. So JSON's very, flex JSON's very flexible. It gives you uh, easy ways to put object notation. Um, ASP.NET Web API and other um, tools that are out there in other languages will automatically turn this into a set of objects for you, um, which makes things very nice. So that, And you'll notice this as we're working with our REST API that basically we're able to just treat things as objects, send them back, and they get turned into JSON. And when they come in, they get turned back into an object. So I hope this was a good introduction to you to JSON. I encourage you to understand and use it as you'll be using it quite a bit if you deal with REST. Thanks for watching, and uh, there'll be more videos out soon.